Good morning. I'm Manoj Krishna. I'm a spine surgeon. I work at the uh, Nuffield Hospital in Teesside. And uh, you can find more information about what I'm going to tell you on our website, spinalsurgeon.com. Today I'm going to talk to you very briefly about red flags. You know, 20 million Britons in, uh, uh, visit their doctor every year saying, help me, I've got a bad back. It's about a third of the population has back pain. And in all those patients, we have to try and find those who might have serious pathology like infection or cancer, uh, etc. So the concept of red flags was developed. So if patients present with any of these features, then um, it flags it up as something that needs to be further investigated with blood tests or MRI scans. So the first common red flag uh, is someone who's really young. So someone who's less than 20 years old, so uh, presenting with back pain, uh, we, possibilities, for example, in the lumbar spine are spondylolisthesis or lytic defects. Um, it could be a, a benign tumor like an osteoidos tumor in a younger person, especially with thoracic pain and a scoliosis. Uh, the second red flag, uh, which I personally don't think is that important, is presentation over 55. And, you know, we have many patients in that age group who have back pain, so uh, it's not really helpful. Uh, particularly. Now, violent trauma is a really important red flag. So if you have a patient, for example, who presents with facial bruising after an, uh, a you know, road traffic accident or a, a fight in a bar, or if the car has been involved in a rollover and the head has impacted the roof, or a fall from a big height, uh, all these imply that there's been a violent, severe trauma to the spine and the patient needs to be investigated. And even if the patient has relatively mild symptoms, it's really important that the patient gets referred for an x-ray and an MRI scan, particularly of the neck. And I've seen many patients who present with relatively mild symptoms, say from after having fallen off a ladder, and the x-rays and CT and MRI shows a dislocation of the spine. So that's important. What about pain that's continuous? It's called non-mechanical pain. So mechanical pain is pain that's eased on lying down worse on sitting or bending. But pain that's progressive and continuous, present even when you're lying down, no posture change affects it, is called non-mechanical pain. And it could be uh, significant and imply a cancer or infection of the spine. And these patients could be treated, uh, investigated with blood tests and an MRI scan. Thoracic pain in any age group is a red flag. Uh, in the elderly, it could imply osteoporotic or metastatic fractures. Uh, in younger patients, there could be scoliosis, uh, or a deformity, or a congenital deformity of the spine, or even a benign tumor, like an osteoidos tumor. A past history of cancer is vital, uh, because patients, when they come to our door, don't really volunteer they had cancer five years ago. They don't think it's relevant to the fact they've got neck pain for four weeks. So it's really important for us to ask these patients. So you can have breast cancer five years ago, and then five years later have a metastatic deposit causing pain in the spine. So history of cancer is important in all uh, consultations with patients see a uh, clinician. Uh, now, there are some uh, conditions like diabetes, people who are HIV positive or on chronic steroid use, which predispose patients to developing infections. So these are important. So patients who have a history of any of these uh, conditions which reduce their immunity, and they have back pain, think of an infection, get some blood tests, and um, perhaps an MRI scan in that group. A history of loss of appetite is really uh, important. Loss of weight is, comes much later, but a loss of appetite in, uh, can often give a clue, a very early clue that something is seriously wrong in patients. So I had a patient, for example, who once told me, I've lost some appetite for the last um, two weeks. I've been on a diet, but for the first time in my life, I've been on a diet and not felt hungry. And that, for me, was enough of a clue to investigate him further, and he had a metastatic deposit in the thoracic spine. So loss of appetite is a really important uh, red flag. Um, any progressive neurology, of course, is important. But that, in a way, is uh, a summary of the important red flags that we have. I hope you find this helpful. Thank you.